All right, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to Inline IPLD. IPLD, now it's for humans. Um, my name is still Brooklyn Zelenka, if you were here from the talk I gave an hour and a half ago. Uh, I'm a distributed systems researcher, uh, and I do a lot of stuff with code and community in this space and uh, some others, especially uh, around things like local for software uh, and uh, privacy-preserving tech. Uh, so DAGs, descent, uh, directed acyclic graphs, are awesome. They give us a lot of superpowers. They let us design um, almost all data structures, can be expressed as them, not, not obviously nothing with cycles. But that does give us a lot of benefits for things like structural sharing, deduplicating data, all of this stuff. And then on top of that, IPLD makes that data distributed, which is awesome. And yet, whenever you add a link in IPLD, you face this trade-off. Are you going to have some uh, potential uh, data availability problem of that subchunk has gone missing? And is it going to be difficult for you to read and debug as a developer? So you get into this problem as soon as you have some structure that has two nodes that want to point to the same shared node. So we're no longer in the world of trees, which can have shared parents. As soon as you have shared children, you need to introduce a link because Seabor, uh, JSON, YAML, all of these formats don't support directly graphs. They only support trees. So here's some pretty typical IPLD. This is a, you know, a little block store, uh, essentially a car file. And we have CIDs pointing to some chunks of data that contain CIDs inside of them. So if I have an entry point into this, which is this chunk, it says name is Juan Benet, company is some link. And that link points to this thing over here. And then if I want to follow that down, okay, protocol labs, great. And they do three conferences. This one down here is IPFS camp. This one over here is IPFS thing. And this one is Phil Dev, Dev Summit. And so I'm bouncing all over this structure to just follow it. Benefit of this format is it's very machine efficient, right? A machine's very good at jumping around in a structure. But for humans, it's hard to read, hard to debug, and in fact, hard to write. If you're trying to actually write this down uh, during uh, development, uh, this is effectively impossible. Right? You have to calculate the SIDs for every step. It breaks up your flow. It's a bad time. Further, on one hand, this is great because it's very concrete, because we have CIDs. But CIDs encode what's your codec and how is it hashed. So for machines, again, this is great because you're dealing with concrete data. But for humans, it's inflexible. Right? Maybe I want to express literally IPLD and I'm going to make the decision of how I want to express that, how I want to encode that later. Because as soon as I have this link here, it depends on all of its sublinks and how those have been laid out. And so if one of those uh, sublinks was just uh, done in uh, protobuf, and I've now switched to Seabor, something like this, now I have different links in my document. So the solution, and good news, it's really simple and actually came out of, so I was feeling this pain, a few of us, others of us were feeling this pain, literally here at, what's it? I think it was actually IPFS thing, but in this um, venue last year, a few of us got talking, we're like, well, couldn't you just like inline the data? And you'd need a, like a delimiter and a few of these things that we're gonna talk about. So actually it came out of having, getting people uh, together at a conference like this. So what do we want? Human readable DAGs, context aware, configuration for the SIDs and sub-DAGs so I don't have to make that decision up front as soon as I want to create a link. I want absolutely no changes to the tools and specs for the rest of the ecosystem. This should layer on top and make zero changes to that stuff. I want this round trippable with vanilla IPLD. This should work with DAG JSON, DAG Seabor, DAG PB, DAG YAML if somebody decides to go there one day. Should work with any of those IPLD variants. It should be acceptable as a wire format, so the car files will always be the most efficient, but it shouldn't be like unreasonable to use it this way. If I want to stick it in an HTTP header or something, it should be like reasonable to do it like this. So at a high level, how do we do this? We encode it to a tree because JSON, Seabor, et cetera, are all tree formats. We take the links what normally would be a separate part of, you know, in a uh, block store, 
and we literally inline the data into that tree. But we make sure that there's a delimiter there so that we know when I want to extract this back into regular IPLD, break that section out and flatten the structure again into my, into my block store. So there's two versions of a delimiter. Uh, one is slash and then inside dot IPLD dot for here or dot for IPLD and an ampersand and the SID. And you could literally read those as data and link. We decided to use single characters so that um, they're, um, uh, they don't take up a ton of space. And you'll notice that uh, this is actually not DAG JSON. This is just a regular IPLD map, right? This isn't a link because it has that dot on the inside, right? At least on, on this first one. So if this was encoded to CBOR, it would be a CBOR map with the first uh, key is a slash that contains another map inside of it with the dot and then the embedded IPLD. The reason it's done this way is because as a human being reading this, you're gonna read this in DAG JSON. So we made it look like DAG JSON. There's nothing special, nothing has changed with DAG JSON in this. So we assume that humans like to read JSON instead of raw CBOR. So this is the same uh, block store, miniature block store that I showed before. And here it is with inline IPLD. This is way, at least to me, way more legible. And all that we added were these two sets of delimiters. So this top one is that first um, broken out section, and then these are the point pointers to the name and location of each, um, each conference. And that's it. And because we have these delimiters, we can walk the tree and we can get back to the original IPLD, right? It's very simple. So when we construct one of these, we have a few decisions to make. How exactly do we want to represent that graph structure as a tree? We have a few options. Um, spanning tree is uh, the most efficient of these. So, um, and we'll look at a concrete example of this in a moment, but a spanning tree just says, okay, so you have a graph, it has all these links, some of them are shared. What is a tree that just touches all of those nodes? And there's a bunch of trees for you know, most graphs. Um, so we take a left-leaning spanning tree, just as the, the default. Another option is saturation, inlining things everywhere. Again, we'll look at this as an uh, example. Do nothing, literally use car files. These are compatible with car files. You can embed inline IPLD chunks inside of car files, or some mix of the above. So as an example, here's some, some shared structure. Here's a little persistent data um, uh, file system. We have a photos directory with IPFS camp and friends.png on the inside. That is version zero, version one, you know, think of this almost like Git, right? So we have this, this versioning. Photos at version one, we added a vacation directory that happens to also have my friends.png on the inside. And it also points at IPFS camp because now I have these two subdirectories instead of one. There we go. And so that's my V1. But I need to keep all of this structure. And uh, so this, is, this has a lot of shared structure and uh, that shared node at the bottom especially. The good news is we don't need to know anything about our application. That's just one concrete example. So we can just look at the shape of this thing. And so the spanning tree version of this, and I'll just color the nodes so that we can keep track of what, what lives where. Um, one option is that we can form a spanning tree just with these nodes, so the grayed out ones. We drop those, we now have a tree. If I rearrange those nodes, it looks like that up top. And there's no, no longer a DAG, there's no shared nodes. Another option, perfectly valid option, is this. Looks like that. So the left-leaning tree is what we do by default uh, if you want uh, something else. Totally valid, totally works. The library will still um, consume it. We just don't ship other options uh, by default. Saturation, uh, so this is where you just uh, uh, duplicate links. Uh, this is the easiest one to read because in spanning tree, you're still going to have um, on this orange node, it'll still point and say, hey, there's a link here. You need to follow that link visually, um, which is good for transmitting or storing to disk. Uh, saturation, we just inline the data everywhere that it shows up. This is way less space efficient, but if you're reading this as a human, great. You've inlined it, and you can just read and follow down as you go. And then when we pull this back into IPLD, it'll deduplicate all those links for you. 
uh, car file. Aren't we trying to get rid of car files? No, I mean, the car file is just this. We've dropped all of the links, and we've put them in a flat structure with a new root. Um, and we can still mix and match them. We can still say, well, you know, I want to keep this link together because I need to read that. I need, we're going to keep this link together because I need to read that. And we just sort of drop things from the, the top level and move them down, right? There's nothing saying you can't do this. Extraction, so having um, one of these structures and pulling them back out into a block store is just the reverse. So we have some inline IPLD, and we're taking it back out to a map of CIDs to IPLD blobs. Um, so um, we have those links, so slash, dot, and IPLD, and then another one that has the ampersand that says the actual CID. Every time we have that ampersand, it uh, creates in that context as we're walking the tree, hey, I'm in DAG Seabor or I'm in DAG JSON and my links are with Blake 3 or with Shaw 2 or whatever, right? And it just takes that contextually and says all of the children should have the same thing. So as we walk this structure, while well, the top of it is DAG Seabor, so we're in DAG Seabor, this one is, will also be DAG Seabor, and then the next one we touch is, oh, that's DAG JSON, so the one below here will also be DAG JSON, and then these two will again be DAG Seabor. And again, the way you switch is you just add another field, ampersand, and the CID of that block, and you uh, immediately inherit uh, all of that SID configuration. That's basically it. So um, where to find more? Uh, we wrote a spec. Um, there's a Rust implementation uh, a, with Wasm, quote, coming soon. Um, the, uh, the Rust implementation uh, was written over the course of like a couple days. It worked with lib IPLD, and then I was like, you know what, I'm going to IPFS camp, and I should update this to IPLD core. And that was a great idea, because IPLD core is awesome, uh, but it's missing a couple things that I've now upstreamed into like six libraries. So I'm waiting for those to merge before I publish this to crates, um, but you can get the code uh, uh, at github.com slash expeed slash inline IPLD slash tree slash work in progress. Thanks.